Hi guys and welcome to this our general math unit one and two video on substitution of values into a formula and constructing a table of values. I know the title is nuts, aren't they? My name is Darren from Maths Guru. Thanks very much for finding this video. Hopefully you're going to find it useful and it's going to help you smash whatever course you're doing. It's part of the VCE series over here in Australia, but trust me, constructing formulas and substituting values and tables of results are basically in maths all over. So fingers crossed it'll help. Can I ask a favor before I go any further and can you just subscribe to my YouTube channel? I know it's weird, but basically very few people watch this stuff. And if you can subscribe, it just gives me a little indication that people out there have watched a video. Hugely important to me, bearing in mind I sit in here and talk to myself or my mother, but that's a whole new discussion and I'm in therapy for. Now I love you, mum. No, I do, really. Anyway, so uh, let's actually get into the fun stuff. Now, normally, you know, I'd read the learning objectives, but oh, I think you guys can read. If you need to, pause the video. And if you want to, head to mathsguru.com where you can sign up for absolutely free and download the lesson notes that I'm writing all on behind me to put in your summary book and all those things as well. Yes, I know, helpful, huh? Try my best. This is basically the first section of a huge, important algebra section of videos that are going to underpin everything you're about to do in general maths. Now, you're going to say, I hate algebra, and so do I, but we're going to get through it with stories like bunk beds, kitty kisses, prison guards, and the works. And yes, if you think I'm having some sort of a breakdown, I promise you I'm having some sort of a breakdown, but I'm doing it very publicly on YouTube, like most celebrities. I'm not a celebrity, shut up. Basically, all I'm going to say is just stick with it. If you don't understand the content, watch the video again, ask someone, it's really, really important. Now, substitution, I know nothing about sport, like literally nothing about sport, yes? Uh, but I do know about substitution, because being British, apparently I should know a lot about soccer. I don't, moving on. Now, obviously, substitution, what you do is you take something off and you put something in of equal value in its place. Yeah, you're going to turn around and say, well, not in the Mets versus da, 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 because he was rubbish. And but the point of it is, when you substitute, you're going to take something off and put something in its place. That's basically all it is. What becomes important once you've substituted is actually then to how to solve it. And we use something called bid mass. No, if you say bod mass, there is an issue. I have no idea what the O stands for. I'm not interested. You say over or of or other. No, it doesn't make any sense. I is for indices. It's for floaty numbers. Leave it like that. And yes, bid mass is really, really important because it's the order gives us an indication of the order that we should do maths. So brackets, indices. Now you're going to say, what on earth is an index? It's a power, obviously, huh? or an exponent. huh? Yeah, exactly. Math is stupid. But if I wrote something like x with a floaty 2, oh, see what I even said it there. That there is a floaty number. It's a number what floats. It is an index. All right. So basically anything with floaty numbers we do with next, then division, then multiplication, then addition, and then subtraction. And depending on the order of the question and what's there, that's the order that you actually solve stuff. Now, something else that's really important in maths is to understand the difference between an expression and an equation. Now, I can make funny expressions. I'm not going to because it will be on video and it'll be a meme and I'm not doing that anymore. Thank you very much. But an expression is basically something like 2x plus 7. That's an expression. x minus 4. x squared minus 2x plus 13. Those are all expressions. Why? Well, let me show you an equation. 2x plus 7 equals 4. Hmm. What about x minus 4 equals 6? Uh, you got it now? I don't want to overlabor it. None of these here have an equal sign in it. So if it doesn't have an equal sign in, it's called an expression. Equations always have equal signs. And that's because one side is equated to the other. Or in this situation, and we'll find out later, we can find the values of x that make the left hand side equal to the right hand side. And my hands were very much the wrong way around there. God, I've got to work out how to flip this thing on the video. Now, substituting is a very funky thing in maths. Basically, again, they will give you an equation. And here I have an equation. C equals 40t plus 10. And they're going to tell you that C is the cost in dollars. That becomes really important in a later exercise when you're going to start creating these. You're going to start making these formulas. T is the time in hours. So wherever I see this value of T, I know it stands for the time. How much would it cost to hire a windsurfer for two hours. Well, they've given me here a number, and it's a time. And they know that T stood for the time. So in this situation, if I wrote down my formula as 40T plus 10, hopefully every one of you out there in YouTube land knows that that is 40 times T. So I would do 40 times T 
plus 10. Well, they've given me the value of t. They told me where I see the value of t, change it for a 2. So I'm literally going to do that. I'm going to substitute. Everything else stays the same. The t becomes 2. ka -ching. And now it comes down to bid mass. Do I have any brackets? No. Do I have any floaty numbers? No. Do I have any division? No. Do I have any multiplication? I should cocoa. And I'm going to do that first. So c is equal to 40 times 2 is 80 plus the 10. Let's keep working down. Are there any additions? Yes. So there we go. So c in that situation would be 90. And therefore, we would probably say $90 because it's dealing with cost. Now, I've got a thing where I teach maths where I go f, s. Yeah, and you're thinking, this guy really is unhinged. I know, I'm so sorry. But I always say, you start with a formula. You always write the formula, because when I write a test, the formula will get one mark. You write it down, I will reward you for it. You then substitute in the value, or you simplify it. And you get down to an answer, yeah? Then I will give you the marks to show, or to reward you for your working out, okay? Because it's important. Another example, the cost of hiring a bobcat is, notice again, C. C is cost. The cost is equal to, so we've got the cost is equal to 330 plus 80T. Well, I know that that's 80 times by T. Right, okay. So again, I'm now going to start thinking about, well, what does this 330 stand for? Well, lots of things you hire have a fixed cost. You're going to pay for them regardless of how long you use them. And then you're going to pay an hourly rate. So again, starting to look at these questions and go, oh, okay, this makes sense. Yeah. How much will it cost? So, right, so they're asking for the cost. How much will it cost to hire a bobcat for 10 hours? Well, when you see 10 hours, what are they giving you? Are they giving you a cost or are they giving you a time? Oh, they're giving you a time. So that means where I am seeing the value of T... I'm going to put 10 in its place. So that stays, that's not a T. 330 plus 80 times, oh, T, I'm going to place for 10. Let's work through my bid maths. Brackets, nap. Floaty numbers, nap. Division, nap. Multiplication, yep. So there's my multiplication. I'm going to do that first. So the C hasn't changed. I'm not doing anything with the 330. 80 times 10, 800. What do I do now? Addition, oh, yep, we got some addition. So C in this situation is going to be 800 plus 330. I don't want to get that wrong. Flipping heck, I don't want to get that wrong. So what I'm going to do is fire up my calculator. Now, I'm going to use the TI Inspire guys. The class pad, exactly the same functionality. Let's actually go menu. He says hitting the wrong thing. Actions and clear history. That's going to make my screen clear because I was doing that on a different question. So 330 plus 800 gives me a staggering value of dollars. $1,130. Now again, you might be looking at that going, why did you use your CAS? It's a CAS enable course. Why would I trust and get this wrong in my head when basically I could do it easily on my calculator just to check? Now, it doesn't matter what formula they give you. That looks fairly disgusting, doesn't it? 2L plus H brackets, 1 plus pi on 2, close brackets. It doesn't matter. When they give you a formula, they're undoubtedly going to give you the information in the question that I'm highlighting here to help you do what you need to do. And the hard work can be done on the CAS. There's nothing to say you have to work all this out in your head. It's a CAS calculator. In this formula, L is the length of the rectangle and H is the height. Find the perimeter, correct to one decimal place. Well, they've said perimeter is P. If L equals 16.1 and H equals 3.2. So what they're saying is where you see an L, put 16.1. Right, so P equals two. Now, I always remember between a number and a letter is a kissy kissy. Again, that's going to come back later on, but that's a time. So two times 16.1. Where did I get that from? L. And they've told me let L be 16.1. So let's work across the formula. Plus H. Well, they told me that H was 3.2. Brackets, one plus pi on two. Well, basically, there's my formula and substitute. I mean, obviously, I've rewritten my formula first. I've now substituted. Let's just get my calculator to do the hard work for me. And I can type it in exactly as it is. 2 times 16.1 plus, he says, trying to do it on the picture, 2 times 16.1 plus 3.2, open brackets, 1 plus. Let's do my control and divide, my fractiony thing. Let's hit the pi button and pi. And then what I've got there divided by two and hit enter. 
and lo and behold, it's done for me. Find the perimeter correct to one decimal place. So in that situation, reading off my calculator would be 40.4. And what are my units? They are centimeters. ka -ching. Doesn't matter how complicated it is, your calculator did the hard work. I typed it in exactly as I needed to because my calculator is pretty clever, all right? The only thing it's not clever at is if you don't put a time sign in the right place. Substituting more than one value. Now, there are times we're going to want to know lots of different values. The cost of, you know, if I'm running a windsurfing place and I want to find out how much people are going to pay for one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, I might create a table. Oh, I wonder if that's where we're going with this video. It is. All right, so I might create a table of uh, values. Um, it's important to notice that, as I say, that T doesn't just have to be one value. It can be lots and lots and lots of values. So here's an example. Right, the formula converting degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit is given by F is equal to 9 divided by 5 multiplied by C plus 32. Use this formula to construct a table of values of F using values of C in intervals between 10, between 0 and 100. Right. So what it is basically asking me to do is create a table. We are going to be given our C values. They've given me the C values. And what they're saying is, let C go up in 10, start at 0, and end at 100. So here is my C value going to 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, dot, 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 100. All right? Now, basically, I've just run out of space. But if you can do some of these, you'll be able to do all of them. And I'm going to find my value of F. Right. So first things first, let's deal with a C of zero. So everywhere in my formula I see C of zero, or C, I'm going to put zero in its place. So if you notice, just to save my calculator, I put here nine on five times by zero. Where did I get that zero from? Oh, C, because there's a C there. Let it be zero, plus 32. And when I did that, out came 32 as my answer. So there was 32. Now I've done the same calculation, but now... I've let C equal 10. So 9 on 5 times 10 plus 32 gives me 50. And then when I let C equals 20, out came 68. Now again, I could replicate this all the way through the table. I'm not going to because of the video. But ultimately, that's a way of turning lots of values by using a table or working out lots of values using a table. And there we go. If we were to take that uh, out of, and thank you very much to Cambridge for allowing me to use your examples. You guys absolutely rock. Yeah? Use this formula to construct the table of values for F using in values of C. Well, that's what we would have come up with. That's my table of results. Oh, now, obviously, this is quite challenging. That's a lot of work to keep typing that formula in. Wouldn't it be great if there was an easier way to do it? We can use our CAS. Now, in this situation, I'm going to walk you through it, but there are screenshots behind me that again, if you print this off uh, from askguru.com, go over there and sign up absolutely free, then ultimately uh, you've got it there as a reference for your summary book or whatever it is you're going to do. So bringing up my TI Inspire. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go Control and Dock. He says, hitting the image again. And I'm going to say Add List and Spreadsheet. The two that you're going to use the most in the General Maths course is going to be these two. List and Spreadsheets, Data and Statistics. Maybe Graphs coming up a little bit later on, but List and Spreadsheet. Now, when you do that, you have got to put titles. If you don't put titles in these top boxes, horrible, horrible things are going to happen. So let me see. The, what were the letters in my formula? Well, we had C was equal to... nine. Uh, no, it wasn't. F was equal to 9 on 5, C plus 32. Right, so the two letters I want are F and C. Oh, fish and chips. Now I'm hungry. Um, but they're giving me the values of C. So I'm going to put C first, right? So C goes there, F goes there, right? What do I want to do? I want my values of C to go between zero and 100. And again, there are lots of ways of doing this. I could go zero, hit enter, 10, 20, 30. That is certainly one way of doing it. But there's another way of doing it. And again, these are all just different ways and depending on knowing how to use your calculator because I can use a formula. So if you can notice now, I'm hovering over the 10. That has actually got a cell name, and it's A because we're in the A column, and 2 because we're in that row. So I can actually go equals. Well, I want the one above it. So the cell reference for the one above it is actually A1, and I want to add 10 to it. Ka-ching, and you're going to say, well, hold on a moment, that's a bit stupid because 
All right, it's, I could have typed that quicker, you can. But now by hovering my um, uh, cursor over there, or by hovering that there, I'm now gonna go menu, data, fill. And you're gonna say what's happened, but when I, do you notice what's happening now when I move my mouse? Well, if I actually scroll down, I can actually, that dotted line is now gonna put values in every one of those squares up to and including 100. All right, so that's one way of doing it. The next thing I want to do is I want to put my formula in. And you're gonna say, what formula? Well, I'm gonna say, he says having put his pen way out of reach, this formula here. Where do I put that? Well, I'm gonna put it in the box I'm highlighting on the screen now. And you notice when I click, it goes F dot dot equals. Don't worry about that, that will auto fill in. I'm now gonna do nine divided by five times now, if I want to use this letter C here, you have to go var, and you'll see a lot of stuff here. I don't know where all those TVM have come from, but that's obviously something I've been doing previously. C plus 32. I've literally typed in the formula. Again, if you see it down here on the bottom that I'm highlighting, F colon equals nine on five times, a little dash C, that came from the variable, times 32. Now when I hit enter, oh my goodness, does it all for me, yes? Now you'll see two screens down here that I was talking about. That's if you actually use the C on your keyboard. Probably best not to use the C on your keyboard. Use the VAR key. And there you go, we've got all of my values on there um, filled in for me. So actually I've created my table of results all the way up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Whew, it's pretty warm. And as I say, this there is uh, a screenshot just so that if you download the notes, you can write all over it and, and put what you need to. Now, there are other ways of doing this on the calculator, and I've just noticed that here, that shouldn't be F equals, that should be C, and I'm gonna change that to C in just a moment. Hopefully, I'll get to update the screenshot before I upload it, but ultimately, that's gonna be C. Now, there is another way of doing it. This is a little bit more complicated, um, and it's sort of a bit of faff. So I'm gonna hit my calculator button, and here I'm gonna do C colon equals. If you wanna know where the C colon equals is, so C, control, and that little button there, colon equals some squiggly brackets, which is there, and then I go zero, comma, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100, and you'll notice I have to type all those values in, and then what you can actually do is you can just put the formula in, as I've said there, so I can do nine on five, times by C plus 32, which will give me my degrees F. So 32, 50, 68, uh, 86, you know, 104, and so we go on. That That's probably way beyond the scope of what you need to do, but it's there, I want you to know how to do it. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it has been given you enough information on how to use your calculator and, and sort of the type of questions you're gonna come up with. Head out there and have a go. If you get stuck, rewatch the video. Head over to mathsguru.com. There are other videos there as well. If you can do me the honor, please, of signing up, subscribing to my YouTube channel, I'd be greatly appreciated. It just lets me know that people out there are watching. Hopefully I'll see you again. If not, please take care and stay safe.